Doctor Sleep is out in cinemas now, directed by Mike Flanagan, starring Ewan McGregor and Rebecca Ferguson. It is a horror film and yet another adaptation of a Stephen King novel this year. Although, not quite. The book, Doctor Sleep, is a follow-up to The Shining, focusing on Dan Torrance after he's grown up. However, famously, there were major differences between The Shining novel and Kubrick's adaptation. And this movie decided to follow the movie rather than the book, uh, mainly because it's just simply more well-known. And as such, it features many direct references to Kubrick's film, even reuses some of the shots and music, uh, and the Overlook hotel sets were entirely rebuilt based on the same plans. As far as the story goes, uh, we open with a couple of scenes of child Danny after the events of The Shining, where he is still traumatized by, what, by what's happened, um, and uh, he has to learn to face his fears and to, to live with them, to handle them. Then we jump to him as an adult, where he's not doing as great with those fears. He's drinking heavily, much like his father used to, and moving from town to town without a place of his own. Finally, he meets a, he meets a friend on the way who helps him set down, um, rent a place, find a job, and even join AA meetings. And eight years after that, the true story begins. We learn of a group of gypsy vampires called the True Knot, and led by Rebecca, Rebecca Ferguson's character, uh, Rose the Hat. They track down people with abilities, the, the Shining, and basically eat their souls uh, in order to extend their own powers and live for centuries. Those people get wind of Abra, a young girl with abilities similar to Dan's, but much more powerful. Um, she, in turn, tracks down Dan himself and asks him for help in escaping or fighting the true knot. And so the journey begins, and it takes us through multiple states as our protagonists try to come up with, way, with ways to combat the encroaching danger. Uh, I'd say, in a similar vein uh, as some of the other King adaptations, it's kind of a mix between horror and adventure. Yes, it is properly scary and gruesome at times, and there are some really bold, heavy scenes in here. Um, and the true not killing a boy... Uh, Rose the Hat fighting Abra in her mind palace, uh, the bathtub lady from The Shining repeatedly appearing throughout the film. But it also does have a sense of movement about it, partly due to the many locations that the film takes place in, but also thanks to the agency that the characters take. They're not just passively waiting for the danger to come to them, they are proactive and smart. In general, I think that the characters are one of the main strengths of Doctor Sleep. Dan has his own demons and doubts and he needs to face his fears time and time again to prove that he is the good man that he wishes to be and, and chooses to be, um, to move out of the shadow of his father. Abra, on the other hand, is bold and courageous. Uh, she takes action but is also not afraid to face the consequences of those actions. She's clever and confident and also knows when to stay behind and let others protect her. And even Rose the Hat is great. Um, I mean, Rebecca, Rebecca Ferguson is just delightfully evil in the role. Uh, but she does also have that mysterious, mysterious sexy air around her. She's at the same time scary and seductive. Just great presence overall. And the dynamic between the three helps move the story forward at a pretty brisk pace. And despite the movie running for two and a half hours, it doesn't feel like it's that long. It doesn't feel like it's dragging. I do think that the balance between the scenes with Dan and, and the ones with the true knot, who are actually given quite a lot of screen time, um, helps with that as well. I think it looks great. I think it sounds great. Uh, in both cases, it borrows heavily from The Shining, but with restraint. Uh, we do end up at the Overlook Hotel eventually, but that's just the very last part of the film, and I liked the way that it builds towards that. The anticipation and the tension just ramp up slowly throughout the story as we get to know and care about the characters before the inevitable showdown. And there is one fantastic sequence with the car driving towards the Overlook where three shots are almost exactly the same as The Shining. They actually reuse the same shots, just made them take place at night instead of during the day. And there's that recognizable theme playing loudly as well. It's, it's just a really brilliant cinematic moment where you feel this payoff, you know, just coming. 
I also want to mention that apart from the simple story about vampires and people with superhuman abilities, there are also underlying tones of fighting and addiction, specifically alcoholism. Um, of course, a very personal topic for, for Stephen King himself. Which is also interesting in comparison to The Shining, because there we had Jack Torrance, um, who had to deal with isolation and loneliness and frustrations um, that he... And he couldn't deal with all those things, so he fell to his alcoholism in the end. Here, Dan Torrance also active, also fight, has to fight those things, but he does so in, in a more active way. He reaches out for help. He takes effort, constant effort, to battle the addiction. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's not a one and done thing, uh, a one and done fight that he just wins and it never comes up again. It keeps coming back at him. The ghosts from the Overlook are a great personification of those internal demons. It's all done in a competent, seamless way, and I guess that's a good summary of the film um, in general. It's it's competent, it's solid and enjoyable, and leaves something to think about. I really liked it. 